Hello guys, same process again. Questions in English first please and then from Italian media after that. We start with Simon again. Hiya, Br Roger, I hope you're okay. Um, just on a personal level, um, it's only kind of a matter of months since you won the Euros with Spain year after winning the Champions League with Man City scoring the winning goal. You've been nominated for Ballon d'Or, but you are regarded as one of the favourites. You're not a striker in the way that most of the winners are. What does that make you feel about how you've played and do you hope to win, I suppose? Well, um, to be honest, uh, very, very happy for for everything that happened to me the last years, I mean, winning what, what we win and in the last summer of the Euros with the, with my country is um, it's just a dream. Um, and yeah, it's the consequences of uh, of you know the work hard and the consistency and never give up, you know, and this this kind of thing. So I always said that individual awards is just the consequences of the work. Um, I really I really feel right now that the people is recognizing my my work and you know and trying to push me to yeah to win it or whatever. Um, it's not something I think to be honest. Uh, yeah, it would be a dream, of course, uh, because I never thought that I could arrive to this stage uh, to this moment. But in the same hand, in the other hand, I mean, the, once you arrive here, uh, you just want to you know people say what they think, uh, both, and that's it. I would have said whatever it is. Um, and as you said, uh, the, the things of the position, yeah, I know I play a different role than the the most players that are nominated in these trophies, I know, but it's also show that the football can be beautiful in different views, you know. You can be beautiful playing as a midfielder or scoring goals or being a defender, you know. Um, we all know how football works. Uh, but yeah, I think there's lots of people that uh, really appreciate the, the role of the midfielder, so let's see what happens. Hi, yeah, Rodri. Um, there's been quite a lot of talk about the amount of games that players are playing at the moment. Um, with the expanded Champions League, obviously you've got the Club World Cup next summer. In your mind, because you've been quite outspoken about it as well, in your mind, how many games a season do you think is an optimum level for a, an elite player to play? Honestly, I don't know the exact number. I think from my experience, I can tell you that 60, 70, no. Obviously, uh, I think uh, between 40 and 50 is, is the amount of games in which a player can perform in the highest level. After that, everything comes, you drop because it's impossible to sustain the physical level. Um, and yeah, and I think this year we're going to go until 70, maybe 80. I don't know. Uh, depends on how far you go into competitions. In my humble opinion, I think it's too much. I think we have to take care of ourselves. Um, someone has to take uh, care of ourselves because we are the main characters of this, let's say, sport or business, whatever you want to call it. Um, and yeah, I think uh, not everything is money or marketing. Uh, it's also the quality of the of the show. Um, so I, in my opinion, when I'm rest, when I'm not. Uh, uh, I say uh, tired. Um, I perform better, and if the people want to see a better football, they we need to rest. Uh, just something to put in there, but um, yeah, uh, that's that's why I think. And just on the quality of games, I think Erling Haaland said in the summer that he didn't think the the European Championship, some of the games there were of the same quality as he he'd seen previously. Do you think that is sort of true of every competition at the moment that? The quality of football is probably not as not as high as we've seen. Yeah, I mean, I think from the in the beginning of the season, it might yes, but now because you end a season very very close to another one, maybe you start the not in the best shape as possible. So yeah, I agree with you. When the when the amount of games start getting bigger, the performing and the quality of the games are are lower. So. Let's see what, what football goes. Uh, in my opinion, I would prefer to have less and better quality, better show for the people. Well, Rico, good to see you. How do you assess City's mental strength at the moment? Because to do what they've done in recent seasons requires a lot of factors, but mental, the mental side of things seems to be a, a big factor. How would you assess the mental strength of your teammates at the moment? 
Yeah, I agree. I agree because uh, there's a lot of tennis. There's a lot of, uh, you know, as, as we said, long seasons and you have to start again. So most of these situations you you kind of cover with a mental strength, you know, uh, trying to be strong, trying to get the machine again <laughs> rolling um, by winning or by performing well. I think the start of the season was great for us uh, because the early you got into this, you know, into this run, uh, the, the, the easiest to, to continue in the season. So, um, yeah, I think that's that's the key, trying to be as fit as possible and try to make the, as you say, the focus and, and the mental health uh, be strong in this moment and followed by the by the season. Just keep you to one each, guys, so we can get through as many as we can. Martin? Hi. <coughs> Hi, Rodri. Uh, Pep said just now, he said he's only just watched the final against Inter for the first time yesterday. Just wondered how many times you've watched it and in particular your, your goal. <laughs> well, the, the, the full game, maybe one, two. Uh, small clips like thousands, uh, to be honest. Um, but yeah, I think it's we were we were watching the, the game yesterday, analyzing them because they they haven't changed much in the, in the in the way they play. And yeah, it was it was great to to see us back. He uh, he told us that he was the first time he was the game. So yeah, I mean, this is football. I mean, uh, was a great time. Uh, but now life goes on and we have no other challenges or goals in in our heads so yeah we we need to we need to go move on and try to to start as well as possible this new competition hi rodri um how much have you appreciated your your time off that you've had since the euros to kind of get a bit of rest um and did you switch off from football or were you sort of watching city switch on a telly somewhere well it was great uh, for for my legs, uh, great for me. Um, I had like one month, and after I need to recover a little bit also. So I think in general terms, like two months, that have been great for me to to stop a little bit and to prepare myself. I think is now nowadays it's even more important to do these kind of things than not come early and do a preseason. You know, I think football is changing in that way. Um, but yeah, it helps me a lot to, to stop. I uh, don't watch much football. Of course, when they start the preseason, I watch them. But uh, try to disconnect. And as your partner was saying, I mean, the mental health in that sense is important to, you know, refresh and, and move on. Hi, Rodri. Just going back to the schedule again. Um, you said a minute ago that someone's got to take care of us, uh, take care of the players. Do you think it will get to a point where? after playing so many games or being asked to play so many games that the players will say, I don't want to be part of this, and they'll actually end up like going on strike or not refusing to play in such you know, such a big kind of calendar? Yeah, I think we're close to that. I mean, because <laughs> it's easy to understand. I mean, if we're asking something, and it's, I think it's something general, I think you ask any player, he will say the same. It's not like the opinion of Rodri or whatever. No, it's, I think it's a general opinion of the players. And if it keeps this way, it will be a moment that we have no other option. Uh, I really think, but let's see, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen, but uh, it's something that worries us because we are the guys that suffer, so uh, yeah. Hi, Rodri. Um, the, the latest news is that you've been offered a, a contract from, from City. So I was just wondering if you could give us some insights into your thoughts on your, your future and how you see your, your career going in the next two, three, four years. Uh, nothing much to say. I have uh, with this three more years at the city, and <laughs> when I signed uh, the contracts, uh, I don't think on, on other teams. I just think on on finishing. Uh, so yeah, um, I have contract with City. Nothing else I can say. James, yes. Just um, Roger, just on the schedule again. The, the the World Players Union have talked a lot about. The, the dangers and the perils of it. The, the, the world's top player, are you as top players now? Is it becoming quite an open topic of conversation among you privately? The schedule in your quiet moments and how big an issue is it? Like the, the players in, you know, when you join up with Spain, do you talk about it? And do the players at City talk about it? And do you think at Real Madrid and Barcelona and all the top clubs, you, players are starting to talk about it and it's becoming a, a thing for you? Well, what a. I don't know because I can only tell you about my club and my national team. But um, 
yeah, it's something we're worried. It's something that, of course, it's not the same for all the players because not all the players play 60 games. Depends on which team you are. Depends if you play more or less. But all of us, we think the same. It's not just about that because it's also the time you have to break. Uh, many things, many things. So, um, yeah, it's something we're worried. I, as we said before, and yeah, let's see what what it uh, brings us. All these things. Last one in English with the answer, please. Thank you. Hi, Roderick. Hi. Uh, again on the schedule. Um, so Erling has had a decent start to the season, you could say, and he's uh, talked about how his long summer break has helped to this. Is uh, his start to the season a good example of why you need a good break uh, between the seasons? Yeah, um, maybe it's a good example. I mean, he had a long break uh, because, well, his country didn't qualify for the Euro, so long break. And you see the how he's performing uh, right now. He's uh, turning again the, that beast we saw in the early days. Uh, and yeah, it can give you a clue that why we ask this. Uh, but I don't know. Uh, to, that's my opinion, and and that's it. Can we take some questions? The headset there, Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Ciao, Rodri. E qualche mese fa a Cancianoglu ha stilato la sua classifica dei cinque migliori registi al mondo, si è messo al primo posto e ha messo te al secondo. Io volevo sapere la tua classifica dei migliori registi al mondo. It doesn't work, yeah. No? No. I understand you, eh, but... No, okay. <laughs> I repeat. I go ahead. Qualche mese fa... Cialanoglu ha stilato la sua classifica dei migliori cinque registi al mondo, ha messo se stesso al primo posto e te al secondo. Volevo sapere se sei d'accordo e invece qual è la tua classifica dei primi tre o dei primi cinque al mondo tra i registi. Grazie. Um, well, it's <laughs> what can I say? I mean, it's his opinion, uh, respected. Uh, I'm not here to judge. Uh, who's the best, who's not the best. I think you guys are more professional to analyze that or, or the fans. Um, I just want to be the best version of myself. Uh, I think he's a great player. Um, I don't want to say who's the better. Uh, I want to be the best. Uh, that's why I perform, but I don't want to do a ranking. Yeah. Ciao. Yeah, sorry. Volevo, volevo chiederti se c'è un aspetto in particolare dell'Inter che vi preoccupa avendo riguardato anche la partita ieri e se c'è anche un giocatore in particolare da tenere in considerazione domani sera, grazie. Yeah, uh, in English or Spanish? English. Um, yeah, we watch, we watch the game, but I don't need to, to watch them to know how they play because uh, Many times uh, showing them, uh, I know exactly the players and how they perform. But I don't know. I think they have many key players. Um, I think they defend very well. Their transitions, they're very good. They're a very solid team. They know exactly what to do um, when they have the ball. For me, that's the most important thing. Of course, they have big starts uh, like you know, like Lautaro or different players that important players in the midfield uh, and well. I don't know, Barella, Karanoglu, many, many of those. Um, and yeah, I think a very complete team. I don't think they are like big star team. That, like, they have a main guy. They, they have lots of good players. They perform well as a team. They're tough to beat. Um, so I think we, we will need our best performance to, to beat them uh, tomorrow. Uh, work collectively as a team. We know that it's going to be like knocking a, a wall uh, because we know how Italian teams defend so we have to do our best in offensively. Last one here, please. Hi, Rodri. Uh, concerning the midfielders, I mean, from a midfielder point of view, what do you think uh, the inter midfielder um, players have particularly have um, they do they have something special? I mean, do the what do you like most of the midfielders because our concern is that after the after the um, Serie A match in which uh, Mr. Inzaghi changed a lot in the midfield, tomorrow probably will play Mikitarian, um, Barella, uh, Cialanoglu. So uh, there is a lot of concern on in this area of the of the of the field. Thank you. Yeah, I think uh, yeah, exactly. Well, the same players that I'm playing from the last years, uh, except Brozovic. Let's say that he move on. Um, 
yeah, I know them very well. I know them how they perform, the the quality they have, and the way they defend and attack in in, in that Inter de Milan. Um, what can I say? I think they're good, very good players. Um, we have to. Uh, they are the guys that control the the game for them, um, and also they they do something very well. Is the the way they kind of pass from a defending to attack in a very high speed and how they control. So yeah, I think we have to watch out. They, they're strong in that area, but we're also strong too. So yeah, let's see. Good battle tomorrow to watch. Yeah. Thank you guys. Yep. Thank you guys.